cool. We're good to go. Let's spend a minute and look at our karma here. We have nine points we can spend. So that's probably worth something. Hmm. Do, do, do. Ranged combat. You know, I should buy a um, point of rifle just because I'm going to try to use that thing. So let's do that uh, right here. Cool. Um, then let's see. Close combat. There we go. Give that a try. Get a little stronger. Because four strength seemed to be the cutoff for all of the things that I was able to do with strength, so maybe that'll give us some extra dialogue options. Alrighty. Check out. So mid-grade security pan. Okay, well I can't break that. I've got the skills of an idiot. <clears throat> How about here? Yeah, here we go. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. Alright. Stand is littered with cigarette butts and action movies. Frame style painting of Chicago skyline done in silhouette. Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Open it to the first paper. There is a receipt struck between the pages and a diary entry. Read it. I just came back from our shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, but with the real Paco, but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's always like, this is how I make the cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need cash. I can support both of us with what I make at the Seamstress's Union, but he just goes on these runs with these bozos all over my floor. I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient. Why does it have to be this way? Inspect the receipt. Receipt for a Browning Max Power Pistol from Gin Park downstairs. Note saying how big guns on hot women turn around. Alright, flip to a different page. Let's do the second diary. This paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Read the diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind, or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comments. I don't know if he's going to help to us to avoid the subject of the conversation completely, but I've felt better without the constant arguing about it. Read the poem. Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave poetry to others. All right. Flip to a different page. Third page. There's a receipt, an old photograph. Let's look at the picture. Picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, and yet she's smiling. Back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Inspect the receipt. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Mari's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. That's interesting. Zebra meat? Flip to a different page. Fourth one. Receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door, set to combination of... Hey, hey, we should write that down. All right, one second, folks. All right, three, four, two, four, three, six. Cool. Done. All right, let's check here. Computer, Coyote's computer is ancient. She probably fixed it, out, fixed it out of a junkyard. Doesn't even have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tap in on the keyboard causes the dust-caked fans to spin up. Power on the screen. Password. Without the password, the only other button on the screen has a password recovery option. Let's do that. Please answer three security questions to reset. Child push. Ah, uh, childhood pet with Shadow the Snake. Favorite musical act? Um... I'm going to say Maria Mercurio. That one I don't know. What's the name of your hometown? Chicago. Security answers were incorrect. All right, well, we need to look at something else quick because I need to find... Yeah, here we go. Broken mirror, hiding a small shafe. Cool, input the diary. Okay. Open it and check it out. Cool, a frag grenade. That's nice. All right, let's look. Where was that information about Maria action movies maybe in her diary here let's flip through this quick uh, 
Alright, whatever. So, um... Let's see here. Is there anything in the bathroom that we can spot to... Alright, whatever. It doesn't make any sense that I can't find out what band she likes. Though well, maybe I was supposed to ask someone downstairs. Yeah, a whole lot of nothing in there. Alright. Let's hit this room and let's take a quick look at... This computer again. Password recovery! This one, we know, was Shadow of the Snake. Favorite musical act. Let's do the Elementals. Name of the Hort Town, Chicago. Alright. Shadow of the Snake. Starfire. Chicago. Ah, cool. Alright, your password has been reset to blah, 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 blah. For security, never write it down. Hey, I just wrote it down the password earlier. Um, let's check out the calendar. Meet with Delilah about gig. Meet Paco, date Pike Place Market, due in 30 minutes. Oh, wait. Today? Meet Paco for a day. Oh, okay. Contacts. <laughs> one, exactly one person. Um, there's no comic link number, blah, blah, blah. All right, access history. Quick scan. The Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a cali cali casual interest in vintage action figures. All right. So maybe the zebra meets for the hellhounds? Your guess is as good as mine. But uh, let's get on with this. Hit the downstairs. All right. Hey, miss. Do you know Paco? He's a ganger, member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. Warned Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live that long. <laughs> Asked her about the meat? No, I'm a vegetarian. All right, Jin Parks. Um, be some more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take the trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you'd go down there and bring me a peace of mind, I'd call a cab for you. Good should be able to get there in time. Gambet, could I? Good luck. Cool deal. Then I'm good. I don't need any more tech. I'm all set. So let's head on out of here. Let's get a drink for the road. Hey, Cherry. Okay, so she won't give me any more drinks. Wow. Thanks, Cherry. You're a real friend. All right, let's take that cab and hit the downtown. Next stop, Paco. Confirm. You catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market in a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to get mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s. Overlooking the bay, now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal, a melting pot of haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights and sounds and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. All right, we're going to go try to find Paco and Coyote, and um, hopefully from then we'll get a lead on Sam's killer. I really don't want to do that, thank you. God damn it. If I had one complaint with this game, it's that that menu just pops up every time we load screens. I don't really know. All right, let's go see who we can talk to. All right, hey, there's Patrick. No, this is Patrick. No, this is Patrick. Hey, buddy. Buddy. The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, complete, undivided attention. You, sir, are a beautiful orc, but you could be so much more. Uh, what are you selling? 
I'm not selling anything. We are giving away the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, productive life. All right, I'll bite. What are these secrets to a more happy and productive life? The first step is to come and simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Come join us tomorrow and the secrets of a better life will be revealed to you. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. Okay, good. You have fun. I'm not going to that meeting. Sorry, buddy. Let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. Furbished flowers? Cool. Synth juice. Just fabs today. Hey, there's Paco. I don't want to deal with him just yet. Um, so let's head down the street a little bit. I don't want to get into... I got dog on a stick? That's nice, man. Alright. Hey, here's Mari's Meat Emporium. That's where uh, she made her order from, but there doesn't seem to be anything I can do with that. Um, and here's an officer. All right, let's see what let's see what happened here. A tall, emotionless Lone Star officer blocks your entry into the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of Organ Grinder's coroner, Dresden. Hey, buddy. What happened here, officer? Homicide. Now move along, please. Let me through, please. I need to take a closer look at the body. No civilians past this point. Oh yeah, Dresden. Thanks, man. It's alright. Steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. The officer looks at you with poorly concealed skepticism. Okay then, make it quick. Beautiful. And on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out, and you notice a string of bite marks on her left arm. Alright. That's nasty. Hey Dresden, what do you think? I value your opinion. So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of the dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I've stumbled across another Ripper murder. Yeah, well that's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. Alright, Dresden, what do you know about the victim? Well, not much. He scratches his head absentmindedly, probably breaking some sort of sanitation protocol. Yeah, well, she's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the Stuffer Shack, just around the corner. Looks like she was just leaving work when it happened. Can you tell if she was subdued before her eyes were removed? That's the strange thing. There don't seem to be any signs of a struggle. Not a single bruise on her body. Yet, she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out, I won't know until we can run some tests back at the lab. Thought you ran the Redmond franchise. That's true, this is a whole other part of town. Is the Pike Place a little far from home? Yeah, well, I really don't mind the change of screenery. He laughs. The coroner from a down for the downtown branch is out on maternity, so I told management I'd cover for her on this one. Plus, I want this sicko cod. You're not a bad guy, Dresden, for a guy who's as creepy looking as you are. What about the bite marks on her arm? Ah, completely unrelated. It appears some wild dogs dragged the body out, f out here from the alley sometime after her death. <laughs> Any sign of magic use here? Uh, no, there's nothing obvious, although I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call in a full magic forensics team, to show, though, just to be sure. So the Ripper takes Sam's liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort? Probably some sort of symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Thanks, Dresden. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? Dresden starts to turn back to the body and then stops. Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get gone before he showed up. Before he shows up. Alright, I'm gonna go talk to him. Hey, this guy. I uh, wait. No, I don't know this guy. This isn't the same guy. All right. There's a. Hold on. This guy's rakish. The plainclothes Lone Star officer, you, before you, spots a tacky hat and a crooked grin to grin to match. So you're the one who's working for the dead man, huh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer Aguera. 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 I'm going to say Aguer. Aguer? You know, 
I could sit and I could pronounce his name all day, but I'm going to call him Officer Aguirre. Pleased to meet you. Now, seeing as this is a crime scene, going is going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? I take it you and McCluskey don't see eye to eye. Let's just say McCluskey and I have some conflicting interests. Some conflicting interests. Uh, you got any leads on the Ripper? Plenty, if you ask McCluskey, but the truth is we're as clueless as you probably are. Oh, well, that's true. Um, got any much on the murder? All right. Not really. We know that it was about three hours ago, and we know that her eyes have been surgically removed. Didn't need Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me, I've been scanning the rest of the scene, looking for witnesses. So far, or no luck so far. Damn Ripper might as well be a ghost. Well, thanks for your... Whatever, officer. Hey, hold on for a minute there. You haven't put a donation in for the Lonely Orphans Fund. Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah, see, you make a contribution to the fund, I put you on a list. And I let you know the next time we find any orphans you might be interested in ah i see well i'm always interested in finding about any new orphans you discover 300 i'm gonna i can't afford that so even 100 million would make a big difference uh well even some some orphans have more expensive tastes than others 200 and you can take it or leave it hell yeah man his face splits into a wide grin excellent i'll start an account for you any, if we get any useful leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. Now, I better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Bye-bye now. All right, well, who the fuck is this guy? Hey. Man, the elf standing before you might possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, formal jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire? Do you know which order organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Who's asking? The elf giggles, a strange high-pitched warble you would not expect to emerge from that misshapen face. Oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. Good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. You know, that's the guy. Right there. That motherfucker right there. The guy. Fucking done. Lab coat. Elves can be really old. They can basically live forever. Um, well, there is a breed. There is an off-breed of elf that lives forever. So he could have been around when they still used scalpels. And I'm on top of a motorcycle. Oh, no, I'm not. All right. Okay. Well, good. I'm done with that. Let's close that up. Let's head down the side street here and see. Then we'll double back and meet up with Paco. Got a lot of irons in the fire right now. I don't want to buy a BTL. So uh, BTL um, stands for Better Than Life, and Better Than Life chips are basically the new drug of choice. They basically show you whatever it is you could possibly want and um, make it better than it could possibly be in life. So you plug a BTL chip into your head, you could be married with kids and live in the dream. The problem is they're addictive and they fuck up your brain. So oftentimes people who have really nasty lives or people who have stuff they want to forget turn to them but they're pretty nasty the orc before you wears a standard stuffer shack employee get up the uniform is well kept and well fitted but the tears streaming down his large crooked face do little to improve his appearance he does not seem to notice you approach hi right, friend everything okay no the orc takes a deep breath before looking up that's my friend on the pavement over there, Blind Lucy. She worked here for three, or we worked here for three years together, and now, well, I guess the Ripper got her. Blind Lucy? Well, Lucy wasn't completely blind, but she was legally blind. She had to wear these huge glasses and hold things right up in front of her, up to her face. But, a, but she got new eyes about a year ago. Any idea how she scored new eyes? No, she wouldn't talk much about it. She just called it her stroke of good luck. I guess that luck ran out. That's sketchy. Um, so, the guy took her cybernetic eyes. They weren't real. Lucy have any enemies? Well, I'm not sure. I know she had an ugly breakup with her boyfriend just after getting those new eyes put in. That guy was pretty upset for some reason and wouldn't leave Lucy be until she filed for a restraining order. That all seemed to die down a while ago. Uh, what was the last time you saw her? Here at the shack. Earlier today. I think she was heading to the market to meet a friend. Hell, if I was going to join her, I was going to join her on the way home. But we got some last-minute customers. He sighs. Anyone strange in the store? <laughs> I see weird stuff every day. It's a stuffer shack, but no. 
nothing stranger than usual. All right. That's all I needed to know. Thanks for your help, and I'm sorry for your loss. Wait, you wouldn't happen to be part of the investigation, would you? I'm in my own way. All right. Well, Lucy had this necklace, an intricate little carving with a dragonfly on it. She wore it every day, and her mom gave it to her when she left Denver. Anyway, you know how Lone Star is. All of her stuff will be bagged and placed in evidence storage until the Seventh World Awakens. I just thought... Well, I just thought if you could somehow get that necklace back before Lone Star cleans everything up, I could send it back to her family. I feel like I owe her that much. Uh, yeah, dude, I got no problem stealing evidence from a crime scene. Let's head right on back there, and we can hit this street in a minute. So let's scoot on down here. Mm, a pretty damn big place here. All right, let's grab her. Let's uh, see if we can get this before McCluskey shows up. You scan the ground near Lucy's body and you spot a wooden object, mostly hidden beneath the dead woman's hair. This is the necklace that Frank was talking about. A thin broken cord trails off one side. It must have snapped during the struggle. There wasn't any struggle. That's interesting. Catch the attention of the officer. Can I take the victim's necklace with me? I'll help you. And it means I won't be helping McCluskey. Reaches down, picks it up, and hands it to me. Thanks, officer. You know, I think buying him off was a good plan. Because that made things a lot more clean than getting caught stealing evidence from a crime scene. Also, I can go help Frank out over here, and that makes everything a lot better. Alrighty. Officer Aguera. Everyone who speaks Spanish in the audience just, like, stopped watching at that point. Alright. Here you go. I got it right here, Frank. As you take the nexus from you, you sense a weight lifting from Frank's shoulders. I'm glad I can do this much for Lucy, at least. Thank you, friend. I owe you. Happy to help. Alright. Hey, Junkie. What's up, man? Bro. Hey, guy. You got any extra new in? I need just... I need some... Sucro zoom for, for from the shack over there. Nutrisoy cakes will fill you up longer. Thanks, chummer. Uh, doing nice things in the shadows really doesn't net you anything, but I already gave fucking all my money to that police officer to buy him off, so I might as well give my last ten bucks to a bum just to even it out. Uh, wait, how much money do I have? Oh, I have three dollars. Fan frickin' tastic. All right, well. If I need to buy supplies, I'll just have to kill people and take them, like the rest of the damn sixth world. Alright, so that's that. So we pretty much dead-ended here. That, is this a road that we can go down? I think it is. Let's go this way. Alright, so... Hmm. Alright, well that's not very helpful. So let's head back this way and go meet Paco. I think he's back over here. Do, do. All right, here, Paco. Hey, man, what's up? Ooh, she has dreads. All right. The kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutters gang. Young, young, clean-shaven, he stands like he owns the street and everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over to you as you approach. Watch yourself, Trog. What do you want? You wouldn't happen to be looking for Coyote, would you, dumbass? It's none of your fragging business. Who the hell are you? I'm Mac. I'm looking for a Coyote, and I need to ask her some questions. Yeah, I need you to tell me why you think that's my problem. I'm not her boss. Find her yourself. I was just at the Union. She's missed two shifts, and Miss Kubota isn't able to reach her on comm. Tough guy swagger seems to drain out of Paco. Good. The cutter is gone. Before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. Coyote's missing? Oh man, that would explain. She was supposed to beat me here over an hour ago. Sorry, I toured a crime scene. Um, look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? She, if she's missing, I need to find her. Let's see. You know a fixer named Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know of him, sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, though, so I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote said nothing about taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek. I know where she went. Damn. 
Why couldn't she wait? Damn it. All right, slow down, Captain. Where did she go? The Royal Apartments, land, or the landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out of the hellhole. Coyote grew up there. She doesn't like to talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to scuttle the score with that guy for years. A few days back, I heard Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. And if those plug thugs caught her, there's a grim determination in Paco's eyes. I'm going over there. You coming? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, one more thing. Coyote had a receipt for some zebra meat. You ever heard of it? Zebra meat? What? Look, the shop's just on the block if you want to check it out, but I'm going to the Royal with, with or without your help. What's it going to be? I'll help you get Coyote back, but you better be able to handle yourself, you fucking child. Of course I know my way around a fight. Stevie J better be ready for a world of hurt. Good. All right, let's get moving. You're going to follow me for a minute because we're going to go... I have a little bit of a snagging feeling that between those diary entries we checked out in her house and, uh, you know, some of the other stuff, um, I'm pretty sure that there's hellhounds in there. And if we have some zebra meat, that'll probably make things a bit better. Zebra meat. A small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow to canine to exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. As soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? We know... Oh, Jesus. He fucking... The cutters are shaking down these guys. Everything cool here? Yeah, everything's swell. Manny continues to stare at daggers in Paco's direction. My name is Manny. Now, what do you want? Um, I have this receipt for an order of zebra meat. You still have it for me? I'll look it up. Got it right here. Two day past the pickup time. Didn't think anybody was coming for it. Here, it's all yours. Um, what's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? I think I will. The hell is that supposed to mean? It means that you and your gang like to scroll through here and relieve us merchants of our new yen. My dad stood up to them, and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of cutter ranks anyway. I couldn't do dreck about that even if I wanted to. Yeah, but I can't kill the shit out of your entire gang, kid. I don't have time for this. I have a... I have a... Alright, um, you know what? Whatever. I'm pretty good. Alright, so... I don't like Paco that much, honestly. He's kind of a dickhead. I'm gonna help him get back Coyote just because she's pretty innocent in this whole mess. But, oh, I'm going the wrong way. But, um... I'm pretty much gonna get rid of him as soon as I can. I don't like this asshole. And, I mean, maybe he's the fucking guy with the heart of gold that she thinks he is. But... A few of his friends are going to bite the bullet if they come around me. Mostly because I have lots of bullets and I haven't got to kill very many people yet. And my Shadow Runner trigger finger one sleeve leather jacket is getting itchy. So, no, it, it, uh, yeah, it does have a sleeve. All right, well, whatever. Let's go. All right. Hey, it's the Royal Hotel. Get the hell in there. Come on, guy. Let's go find Coyote. Okay, I am ready. Alright. Let's clean out an apartment building full of assholes and drug addicts next time.